guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another Make Shop Pro video. So in this one, what I wanted to go over was just different strategies for being able to use Paint Shop Pro faster. We're going to cover a lot of different things and my expectation is that some of them you're probably already familiar with or already using, but there may be some that you haven't used before and my hope is just to be able to share what they are and see if it's something that you want to incorporate into your workflow. The other part of it too is the goal is not necessarily to do all of them because somehow that'll just make you a master user, but really to allow you to think and consider how can these things help me and to use them only in the ways that they can actually help you. All right, so let's get into it. So the first one I wanna cover is shortcut keys. And the idea behind shortcut keys is that instead of going through menus or clicking on multiple different icons to get to a particular function, um, you can just hit a combination of keys or a single key to launch that function. If you were to hover over many of the icons or even if you were to pull down some of the menus and look at some of the specific capabilities, you'll see a key or combination of keys referenced next to it. And those just mean that PaintShop Pro by default has already assigned a shortcut key to that capability. However, you can assign or even change existing shortcut keys to whatever you like. And the benefit here is that you can come up with keys that make sense for you or maybe are just the most convenient just to speed up your workflow. My recommendation would be to only do this for capabilities that you use a lot. Don't worry about trying to shortcut key every single operation or memorize every shortcut key operation, but consider what you do, consider what you use the most, and those ones, assign it to a key that you really like or that you'll be able to remember, or just learn the key that's already associated with what it is. In my case, I have a gaming mouse, so you can take that even another step further and map keys directly to some of the extra customizable buttons on a mouse, or if you have a keyboard that has custom function keys, assign it to that. The simplest way to customize a shortcut key is to simply on any toolbar, right click and click customize. From this window that has the customize banner, go to the keyboard tab, and from here, you can go to any category or menu, find a specific operation, and change its current key or add a new one. For example, if I take levels operation and I wanna give it the key number one to press to launch it, I can set it here if I didn't like that. Say I wanted it to be two. You'll notice that it says two is not being used, so I can hit assign and now it's there. And now if I close this, and if I were to press the number two, levels comes up. Next, I'd like to talk about scripting. The best way to make use of this is to once again, click on any toolbar and under palettes, turn on script output. That way you can see what actually happens and then go to toolbars and turn on script and you'll get this toolbar here. I'm not gonna do a walkthrough on how to use scripting, I think there's a lot of good videos out there, but essentially what it does is you can either hit record and do a set of operations and then save it and then rerun it, and it'll reproduce that same set of operations for your existing image or a different image. Um, or um, there's a lot of already stored scripts available that you could use just by clicking play. It's gonna run that operation on your image and do a lot of different effects and come up with some sophisticated approach to a particular image. There's a lot of scripts that can be either bought or downloaded online. So if there's any particular set of operations that you want to do over and over again, scripts are a great way to go. As well, that leads into the next concept, which is batch processing. And batch processing basically allows you to apply a script, but to a whole group of images. This can be great for um, frame by frame video editing if you want to do it on a particular image sequence or if you want to apply something generic like sharpening to a whole group of images. So another way to implement applying batch uh, changes to a group of images uh, can be done without scripts and in the manage window. And so the idea is, is if you made a change to a particular image, and even if you didn't save it in a script, if you wanted to apply that same set of changes after saving the first image that was modified, if you were to go to the manage window where that file was changed and view it, you can right click on it, go to capture editing, 
then select all the images you would like that set of editing to be applied, and then you could say apply editing. And what you'll see is the batch process window comes up, and all those images will begin to be converted with the same set of changes as the original that you first saved. Note, however, this only works when you have manually edited a photo and that you are still in that PaintShop Pro session, like you haven't closed PaintShop Pro. Um, if you move the original photo that you modified or the changes were generated via this copy operation, or if you close PaintShop Pro, all of those changes that you made that you would want to copy later will all be gone. So it's only stored temporarily in that one session that you're working in. So if it's a change that you want to be able to use later, it's better to create a batch script. Another feature in PaintShop Pro that can help speed up your workflow is if you have a particular set of settings that you like to use that you know you're going to use again to save it as a preset. So in this example here, I have a thumbnail and let's say I wanted to add some drop shadow directly behind and not offset from my text here. If I go in and I go to my layer properties tool, I could go into drop shadow, enable it, and then adjust the settings so that the drop shadow is actually behind it directly. And then I would get that effect. Or I can come in in the same way, and having saved that preset, I can just hit Halo Shadow, and what we'll see is it's already enabled, and it has those settings already in place, and there it is. You can do this for almost any a tool or any property change. Just once you get the settings correct, save it, give it a name, and it'll be available to you anytime you want to use it in the future. So another feature is either customizing or creating custom toolbars. Now, in newer versions of PaintShop Pro, this has become a lot easier. They've added the quick customize capability where you can just click on the plus button and essentially browse through a whole lot of their capabilities and just add simple icons for features that you may normally want to get to much quicker without using shortcut keys or any of those things. Another capability is to be able to create a toolbar specifically filled with only the things that you want. I have one for vector graphics and I have another just for photo editing uh, tools that I use the most. This can simply be done by right clicking on it, clicking customize, going to toolbars, and then saying new. Give it a name. And then now you'll see there's this little toolbar with nothing in it and you can use all of the regular command options to be able to identify capabilities you want and just drag it into it. One other thing to note on this point is that as we've talked about scripts, being able to generate scripts or having scripts that you have found online, you can assign an icon in the scripts tab under customize and even be able to drag these capabilities into your toolbar. So now we've combined scripting with customized toolbars. So shortcut keys or clicking, whichever method you want to use, there's a lot of different ways in PaintShop Pro where you can get to the actions that you use the most. And in general, hopefully you can see that there's actually a lot of tools and tricks and uh, capabilities that PaintShop Pro provides for you for you to be able to increase just the speed at which you work to remove some of the toil and remove some of the monotony of clicking several menus or buttons for operations that you know you're going to want to do over and over again. I think art becomes a lot more fun if you can focus on the creative part rather than the mechanics of just applying a filter, clicking on this, adjusting that, or tweaking all these little things. So that's it. Covered a lot of different things. Um, shortcut keys, custom shortcut menus, scripting, using presets, creating your own toolbars, batch scripting, batch copying. Uh, I imagine, like I said earlier, you're familiar with some of these, but I do hope that some of the points that I covered may have opened your eyes a little bit to some of the other capabilities you might be able to employ. The final thing I'll say is, 
Um, whatever methods you employ, you just have to use it over and over again. You have to take that time to get sort of the muscle memory and the hand-eye coordination in place because familiarity is really what's going to speed you up in the end that as long as you know where to go and what to do, um, regardless of whether you use any of these or just have a longer process that if your mind can just cruise through it and your hands can just cruise through it, that's going to be the fastest method that you're going to be able to use. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like updates, go ahead and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.